Hey everyone and welcome back to another World of Warcraft Legion video. So today we're going to be talking about the success of the expansion. Blizzard have in a press release actually told us how many copies it sold and have talked a little bit about the concurrency numbers that Legion has actually got. What's interesting is we can compare this to the past expansions and sort of figure out how Legion has been doing, roughly. So here's the headline bit of news. Legion sold 3.3 million copies. Now, my interpretation of their press release is that that is the total number of copies of Legion that had been sold by the end of day one, which includes, therefore, all of the pre-orders that Legion experienced. Now, as far as pre-orders go, we really don't know how they performed. I'm assuming they performed quite well. We did get a infographic come out, which told us that 3.9 million demon hunters were created. However, multiple demon hunters per person, therefore, it's hardly a number that really tells us that much about the total number of pre-orders that Legion experienced. But yes, 3.3 million is how many copies it sold as of day one. That's likely a, you know, that's likely a far higher number now uh, than it would have been because I think Legion was facing, it was definitely facing some, uh, some struggles. It was coming off Warlords of Draenor, which wasn't particularly um, popular, and I think gave a, a widespread perception of World of Warcraft that wasn't that good. And a lot of people in even my video comments were saying, look, I'm going to wait and see how Legion does, and then maybe I'll go on board. And so far, there's been a very good reception, strong reviews, and, uh, well, strong day one performance. Now, what's interesting is how this compares to all of the different past expansions. So, thankfully, MMO Champion, being as useful as always, have provided the sales numbers for the past expansion. So the Burning Crusade, 2.4 million first day, 3.5 million first month. Wrath is 2.8 million first day, 4 million first month. So you can see Wrath, you know, had a nice sort of iterative, uh, you know, increase over the Burning Crusade. And do bear in mind that Wrath is where the game peaked at its all-time high of subscribers. We then move into Cataclysm, which sold 3.3 million first day, so that's the same as Legion, and 4.7 million first month, which overall really is extremely high. Now, what's interesting about Cataclysm, in my mind, is that that's really, I th if I believe correctly, that was the first expansion where Blizzard were really pushing digital pre-orders as a thing. Of course, the internet has actually... It's funny that a game is so old that, you know, we talk about the development of the internet as being a thing that is actually impactful over its lifespan. But faster internet, people downloading games, that's all happening more and more around the Cataclysm time. So I think that factors into it in an interesting enough way with the digital pre-orders. Miss of Pandaria. Now look at this for a drop. 2.7 million first week. So the entire first week of Mists was less than the first day of Wrath, and I think that just comes down to it being a theme which, you know, was quite divisive. It wasn't really perhaps what a lot of people were looking for in World of Warcraft. It might have been a theme that they like in other bits of media, but it's just not what Warcraft is to them. I think that's what that first week uh, sort of low number is. Warlords of Draenor, 3.3 million first day, and then of course Legion, 3.3 million first day. So what do we know? Overall, the um, you know first day performance is pretty good. That means that the sort of hype that the marketing machine has created and people's pre-launch thoughts has all led to it doing quite well. What's far more interesting in my mind anyway is the concurrency numbers. In the games industry, a lot of the time, and there's actually a good parallel um, with YouTube here, but people don't, I mean, people obviously care about uh, the number of people on a game or whatever, but what really is important is engagement. Uh, to bring that into a parallel with YouTube, your subscriber count doesn't actually matter that much. What matters is how many people are actually viewing uh, your video. So you'll see a channel with 300,000 subscribers that doesn't get as many views as a channel with 100,000 subscribers because the channel with 100,000 subscribers understands how to engage people. And when we bring this across, or bring that example across to Legion, you know, it even if it didn't have the most sales, if it's got the highest concurrency, then that's an extremely good trend because it shows that it's a really good fit for the people who it's being marketed towards. So what this means is the people who want to play Legion, who want to get into World of Warcraft, are getting into Legion. They've already, you know, they've done their purchase, but they're actually having that content uh, maintain their interest. So that is extremely interesting, and what we'll really need to see is how long that concurrency can keep on going, and whether it's the sort of thing that is uh, sustainable or not. Even look at the concurrency numbers of Pokemon Go, like massive fad, but they're dropping like a rock, and I think a part of that's because of the game design of Pokemon Go. It's, it's, it's extremely grindy, there's not new content coming out, and I don't think it's a one-to-one -one comparison at all, but thinking about Legion, 
you know, you've logged in and you've seen all these world quests that you need to do, the game is constantly saying, hey, hey, you, look, you know, open up your phone, look and see that in Stormheim, there's a quest that gives you a really good set of bracers. Uh, therefore, that's something which is going to drive up the concurrency numbers because it's getting people uh, into the game and constantly giving you a reason to think, damn, I need to go play World of Warcraft, uh, which, you know, is is great in many ways. It's getting you into the world. It's getting you playing the game, making, uh, you know, making the populations of the zones be high. The question is whether that's sustainable and whether that's something that will keep on going within three or four weeks. What I personally think is going to happen is that engagement with world quests will decrease over time. Um, in a natural way, I don't think in a sort of blowout way, in the way that, say, people were, you know, going ham on the garrisons for two weeks and then disappeared. Um, I think it's pretty reasonable that it'll just get to the stage where people are doing the artifact power, little things like that, but they're not going on doing full map clears or anything like that. But what it does show is that, as, you know, the base system itself does seem to be something that's quite compelling to people. Now, what really fascinates me about that, and what I think could be really good for the future of the game is that the devs in PAX, they talked about they had to restrain themselves from not doing loads of world quests in the old zones and not doing all the scaling there because they wanted to just see how it was in Legion as a test case. At least I think a lot of these early numbers are saying that was a pretty good test case. Now, as far as all these concurrency numbers go, we also have the new raid content coming out. Well, we have the raid content and the Mythic Pluses unlocking, which I think are going to really help to maintain those concurrency numbers. That's I think that's high quality content, but it's also content that keeps people online for a good amount of time. So as far as concurrency uh, goes, you know, if you've got everyone logging in for a 15 minute play session, you're going to have a lot less concurrency than everyone logging in for a two hour long play sessions. So that's boding quite well for them. And then, of course, we also have patch 7.1 already, I think, being something that we could almost say content aside looks extremely good for Blizzard. It's a very different narrative to what they created for themselves with Warlords, and that's something that I think, as far as public perception, uh, that's something that's going to definitely stand to them and really help them out. As far as the concurrency not being the highest that it ever has been, well, we need to think about the point that it's, you know, it's, let's just say this is the second highest concurrency point, which it seems to be, um, because we know it's the highest since the 2010 launch of Cataclysm. It's really important to remember that Cataclysm launched to some pretty extreme hype. You, I think, then had the first wave of, um, at least from YouTube, you know, Total Biscuit, Jesse Cox, a lot of people doing videos that got a lot of content, or, you know, a lot of views even. You know, there's a, I think, like a, a different type of hype machine going for that than there maybe had been for the launch of Wrath. Um, of course, Wrath's launch did extremely well, but with Cataclysm, we had that amazing cinematic. We had a lot of very good vibes coming off a raid tier that had performed extremely well. Wrath was overall their, you know, their largest peak in terms of overall subscriber numbers. So I think it does make complete sense that, you know, the expansion after their peak is going to be the one that naturally had the most launch concurrency because that's just when the highest, like, you know, number of players uh, were getting in. But of course, with Legion, we're just going to have to see how it pans out. I'm sure that if it's good news overall, as far as subscriber numbers goes and stuff like that, that Blizzard will make some sort of show and dance over it because, well, it does make good sense. It's, of course, worth bearing in mind that they technically no longer report subscription numbers for World of Warcraft. Now, what's going to be interesting is whether that decision is going to impact what they tell us. So, you know, it could be that they're maybe at 11 million subscribers, but they're not reporting subscriber numbers, so they don't tell us that. It'll be tricky to know. Hopefully they do, because the more information, the better, as far as I'm concerned, and what people, I think, constantly measure World of Warcraft's success against is Wrath of the Lich King and the early Cataclysm area. People are measuring it to when it was at its most successful. And that's why, you know, with World of Warcraft, it's either been this kind of, this story of falling from a point or this kind of underdog story constantly of, oh, come on, the next expansion will do it. And so it's, yeah, how they feed into that narrative will be interesting. And certainly that's something that their future numbers might be able to say. But really, that's, I think, all we can really garner out of this data. I will keep uh, I'll keep an eye on this stuff, and hopefully we do get some updates from Blizzard's End. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for me. Let me know what's up with Legion for you down in the comments or via Twitter, which is the best place to get a hold of me. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.